Hi, this is Ms. Delosier, and these are your notes on careers in pathophysiology. Um, and we're going to start um, this by talking about why you should consider a career in pathophysiology, but I do want to go ahead and get out of the way that we are not covering all of the careers in pathophysiology. We're just going to hit the big three today. So who should consider a career in pathophysiology? Well, anyone that's interested in anatomy and physiology should consider a career in pathophysiology. Also, people who like a laboratory setting um, rather than interacting with patients. So if, if you think that you're interested in like medicine, but you think that you would have a really bad bedside manner and you don't really want to talk to patients, this is a good path for you. Anyone that's really interested in mysteries and puzzles, if you really like the TV show House, um, then this is the type of thing that you do. You're, you're problem solving, trying to go ahead and figure out diseases. People interested in uh, the science and technology side of medicine more than the patient side of medicine. Uh, pathophysiology is a good career path for you. So why should you consider it? Well, the main reason that you should consider a career in pathophysiology is we are going to have a humongous shortage of pathologists and the associated fields. So the job prospects are really good. There's going to be thousands and thousands of jobs opening up in the next 10 years, and they are all fairly decent paying to really good paying jobs. So let's start right in talking about the um, the job that most of you have probably heard of, which is pathologist. A pathologist is actually a physician, which means it does involve going to med school, which means it involves an additional four years after college. And they're a physician that is trained to identify how diseases affect normal body. And it's not um, just looking at the physiology like we've been talking about. They're actually trained to identify how diseases affect the structure of the body, the anatomy, and also the physiology, the function of the body. So obviously this is a, a, um, a med school degree. So you're looking at going to undergraduate and then after that med school. The next um, two jobs we're actually going to talk about together because they're so similar. Uh, those are histotechnologist and histotechnician. Uh, the word technician, I'm, I'm sure you're um, familiar with. So let's talk about the prefix histo. Histo is a Greek uh, prefix uh, from the word histos, which means tissue. So histotechnologists and histotechnicians prepare slides of body tissues to look at under the microscope. And that's basically what they're doing. Uh, and a a career in histotechnology or histotechnician is going to be really useful in hospitals, research laboratories, um, industrial labs, and government agencies. Basically, anyone that actually needs to examine uh, body tissue underneath a microscope needs a, a good supply of histotechnicians and histotechnologists. So let's talk about the differences between the two. The difference is primarily how long it takes to become one, and then you know, based on how much time you spend becoming one, you're going to get paid more, right? So a histotechnician is one year of training in the field or an associates of science degree, which is a two-year degree. A histotechnologist is a bachelor's of science degree and one year lab experience. So um, you can imagine that a histotechnologist, because it does require more training, is going to um, have a higher salary. So those are the only three career paths that we're going to talk about together. Um, the rest of the career information you'll be getting from your classmates after you finish your projects. I hope that this information has been helpful. Those of you that do receive these three jobs, you're still going to have to do quite a bit of research. Thank you.